Hello there, welcome to the Streams Online pre-show. I'm Femi OK. Today we're talking about the Russia Montana gold mining project in Romania. Thousands of Romanians have been protesting against the project and we want to find out why. To help us do that, we're joined by Catalin Hosu. He is a communications manager of the Russia Montana Gold Corporation. Mishna Bledayu is a member of the Save Russia Montana campaign. Alexandra Doru is a communications manager of the Russia Montana Cultural Foundation. And Yonel Blankulescu is a Romanian economist and a special advisor to the Prime Minister. So welcome to all of you. I don't think I've said Russia Montana so many times in my life before as I have today. It's great to have you all here in the stream. I'm going to actually introduce you to Malika Bilal. Thank you, Femi. I'll be across Twitter and Facebook and hello. Google Plus. Uh, hello. And all of our social media platforms looking for gems like this one from Adrian, who pitched today's show. You'll hear from him in the main show. He tweeted us this not too long ago. Over 2,000 people continue to protest against controversial gold mine project in Romania. And you see a picture there on my screen. So keep the tweets coming throughout the conversation. So, Russia Montana. I have been saying it many times over the last 24 hours. I have never been. Catalin, you live there. Give me a very short description of what it's like. Indeed, I lived there for about 10 years now, I think 10 and a half years. And it is a mountain village which um, exists since uh, Roman times. And basically, um, it's, uh, it's, it is and it was always a mining town. Okay. That is Russia Montana. All right, very good. You know, um, have you been to Russia, Montana? You must have done, right? Yes. What was your first impression? My first impression, uh, it's uh, Russia, Montana Gold Corporation. Uh, it's a really big uh, investment project uh, for uh, Romania. And uh, we are uh, very interested uh, to grow our uh, economy, to begin all the possible uh, uh, investment project, uh, especially in this uh, crisis uh, period. And uh, we are very interested uh, to, to, to begin uh, this project uh, because, uh, in my opinion, uh, we, uh, we, we uh, could uh, uh, perform uh, many performances for uh, our uh, economy. Okay, well that's so the economist viewpoint. Alexandra, uh, how would you describe Russia Montana? I'm trying to build up a, a picture how all of our guests see this area, this region. What would you say? Yeah. If uh, Mr. Blankulescu say, uh, say, sees Russia Montana just uh, equal to a gold mining uh, corporation, I see Russia Montana as uh, a national heritage site, a 2,000 years history site with 140 kilometers underground galleries. Some of them are perfectly preserved, unique in the world, a unique architecture. Uh, Russia Montana is part of Apusin Mountains, which represents a region of national identity. Okay, we are getting the different viewpoints of Russia Montana. <laughs> Do I have the complete picture yet? Probably not. Not until I've spoken to Mishnia. Mishnia, give me one more piece of the puzzle. How do you see Russia Montana? Well, well Russia Montana is a beautiful Romanian village with, uh, as Alexandra said, a lot of history, a lot of uh, not only national heritage but actually worldwide heritage. It's a yes. village in which um, uh, many people live uh, through farming and through agriculture and through uh, tourism. And it's quite interesting that Mr. Blanculescu sees it only as a mining opportunity. And I think uh, the first, uh, the beginning of the show, uh, okay. the Former, the former um, uh, Russia Montana Gold Corporation advisor in Mr. Blankulescu spoke to because he used to be a former advisor for Russia Montana Gold Corporation. Now he's okay. an advisor for Prime Minister. All right. So this is why we get some very, very vivid insight into our guests, how they're going to debate and where they're coming from. So guess you've all heard each other. You know who each other happen to be. And we are now going to have that discussion on the main show of the stream. And that discussion is coming up in 30 seconds time. Looking forward to it. You ready, Malika? I'm ready. OK, we're ready.
Hello, I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, it's a gold rush many Romanians are protesting against. We look at why, in one of the EU's poorest nations, many reject a mining project worth $19 billion. Malika Balau is our digital producer. She is here looking out for all of your live feedback. We are getting a lot from Romania. There is, and I'm looking forward to the live aspect of it also. But since a picture is worth more than a 140 character tweet ever mm -hmm. could, <laughs> <laughs> Romanians <laughs> are sending us shots of their town and why some of them are post to the mine. Embra tweets, Romania benefits from Rocha Montana as it is, our piece of heaven, and then links to a picture of Rocha Montana below. Very nice. See, and I've also been looking up at the uh, photojournalist Mergo Vazario, and he's taken pictures of the gold money that was already in Russia, Montana, and that closed in 2006. And this picture, not quite so pretty. So we have many different perspectives that we're going to be exploring in the next 30 minutes. Right. Always more than one side to every story. And we want to hear your voice as well. So make it heard. Just make sure you use the hashtag AJStream. Now, of course, Twitter is just one of the many ways you can be in the stream. For all of you Google lovers, we're on Google Plus as well. You can join our circle by going to plus dot google dot com forward slash plus the stream i hope you got that click on the right hand side to join seven hundred and fifty thousand other streamers so many stories and things that you can comment on and also pitch in as well hi i'm adrian pagurario from romania i asked the stream to cover the debate around the russia montana mine and i'm in the stream See what happens when you suggest a story? We sometimes do the program. So the small town of Russia, Montana has lots of gold, but for years there's been a long running debate. Can you get the gold without damaging the environment or the community's cultural heritage? The Romanian government recently backed plans to turn the small mining town into Europe's biggest open cast gold mine. The project, which has been held up for more than a decade over its environmental impact, is heading to Romania's parliament for consideration later this month. Canada's Gabriel Resources Company is behind the project and they're offering Romania a 25% stake with 6% of the royalties. They say the new mine that's worth almost 19 billion US dollars would create thousands of jobs and benefit the country's economy. But civic rights activists and environmentalists are not buying that pitch. Thousands have been protesting against it for days now and they say the project which plans to use 12,000 tons of toxic cyanide a year to extract hundreds of tons of gold and silver would destroy villages and wreck the town's ancient Roman mining galleries. So is this a case of environmental disaster or economic opportunity? To help us work this out, we're joined by a number of guests. On Skype, we have Catalin Hossu, he's a communications manager of the Russia Montana Gold Corporation. In our Google Plus Hangout, we have Mishnia Bladayu. He's a member of the Save Hello. Russia Montana campaign. Hello there. Alexandra Doru is a communications manager of the Russia Montana Cultural Foundation. Hello. Hello. And Yonor Blankolescu is a Romanian econ economist and a special advisor Hello. to the Prime Minister. Hello to everybody. Welcome. It's great to have you in the stream. I'm going to start with Mishnia, first of all. Mishnia, Russia Montana, gold mining tradition, gold mining town, what is the problem with a gold mining project coming to the area? Well, uh, the problem is uh, what you see right now in the Romanian streets of Bucharest, Cluj, and another 25 cities since uh, Sunday, 1st of September. Uh, the problem is that the Romanian government has, uh, has uh, issued this special <coughs> law, uh, special law regarding this uh, company and this project. And they did this project, uh, and they did this law by uh, by uh, trying to accept the Russia Montana uh, side uh, from other constitutional law. And for example, I must uh, quote you something from uh, from a special law regarding Russia Montana. For example, the Russia Montana Gold Corporation is the designated representative of a Romanian state in land expropriation procedures necessary for mining exploitation. Uh, Russia Montana Gold Corporation can become the owner or lessee of any other property necessary in the mining perimeter, over which the Romanian state and local administrative units have a private or public sure. ownership. Sure, Mishnia, you, so you're no, quoting and you're there quoting from a yes, document, and, and I want you to yeah. make it uh, obvious for all of our international audience. So I don't want you to quote. I just want you to talk to us about the protests and what you object to. 
in a nutshell and then we'll move along. Yes, this special law is an anti-constitutional law and should be annulled or rejected <coughs> by the Romanian parliament. And that's why the people are in the street. The people had enough of this kind of special laws and about the special interest of this company. And they just want this project rejected and for Russia Montano to live on and to be forever a piece of heaven that we've all been there and we've seen. Okay, so let me just go to Catalin from the Russia Montana Gold Corporation. I just want to be very clear what you're bringing yes. to this region, very simply, explain it. Well, as I said, Rosh Montana was always a mining town, and it is a chance for, for the Rosh Montana people to be miners again. We're talking about um, a gold and silver mining project in, uh, in Rosh Montana that will use the, the best available technologies in, in the world. Uh, the same technologies that are used, uh, I don't know, in the, in the United States, in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Sweden, Finland, and and so on. We're talking about uh, a little bit over 300 tons of gold, uh, approximately 1,500 tons of silver, and that will create a lot of benefits, and not only economic benefits, as are, are the, the taxes and the dividends and, and the royalties, but also there's going to be a lot of investment for the environmental uh, side of uh, of Rosh Montana or environmental rehabilitation, but also cleaning the the historic pollution. There is a lot of investment in the cultural heritage that was uh, was mentioned before by uh, by uh, your guests, and uh, we are already investing. Um, I would say more than one million dollar at this point in um, uh, making safe and available for public some Roman galleries and we already restored and renovated 25 buildings from the historic center of uh, of Russia Montana. We okay. have about 500 employees at this point and yes the thousand the thousands of jobs will be will be created by this mining project. Well Catalan you mentioned a lot of points right there but one thing that I picked up on is you mentioned the use of technology. Now that's something that our community is also picking up on. We asked would the benefits from mining reach the citizens of Romania and we got this tweet back from Enda who says oh yes sarcastically the citizens of Romania will have great benefits such as a huge lake of cyanide the biggest one in Europe. So we've we've read about cyanide being used in the process um, to extract the gold. Can you give us a quick explainer on how, what that process will look like? Yeah, well, basically the gold and silver is in very small microscopic particles in the rock. So you have to crush the rock, then you mill it, and then you add cyanide and water to leach the, the gold and silver from, from it. So basically that's the technology that it is used all over the world for more than 100 years. It was used in Romania since uh, the the, between the two world wars, it was used after the, the second world war, it was used until 2006 in, uh, in Romania. It is used in more than 500 mines, gold mines in the world. So basically for the last 20 years, at least 90% of the gold in the world was obtained by use of this uh, technology. So Alexandra, I, I'm, I'm just thinking about the residents. There's, there's a phrase that I grew up with in the UK, which is, you're sitting on a gold mine. These residents literally are sitting on a gold mine. What are they, I can hear what they may well be gaining, but what may they be losing if the gold mining project goes ahead? They lose their identity. They lose uh, who they are. They use uh, their justice. They lose their uh, uh, democracy. Um, they lose four mountains, and the, the the most the most important of all of this, we lose our freedom, because all this question is about transparency, uh, justice, and freedom, which we don't have. It the people are out in the streets today because they are tired of being live. They are tired of politician leaders that don't think about their future. They choose investments with no discrimination. And I think that's it. There's a documentary I want to show a little clip for our audience. It's called uh, Russia Montana on the Brink. And I want to play you a little bit because it follows this whole debate and what's happening locally and what particularly is happening to the residents. This is a journalist and the journalist is um, talking, Stephanie Ross, about what's happening to the residents who live there and what's been happening over the last couple of years. Have a look at this. Rosh Montana is an inhabited area, it's a village. And in 2002, the mining company started to move out the people. It has created incredible tensions amongst families and children. 
Uh, to give you an example, we have lots of widows in Rocha Montana because their husbands used to work in the mine and uh, they got silicose and they died. And the widows, they have lived here all their life, but the children who moved away uh, don't have these kind of roots. And then what happens is that uh, they put their mothers into asylums. And we have stories of ladies who tried to break free and come back to Rocha Montana and they went back into their homes and they stayed there for two or three days until the police came and had to take them out by force. So Ian L, let me just bring you into the conversation at this point. You're a special advisor to the Prime Minister of Roman Romania. Uh, with Fanny, residents being I, treated like I this, word, yes, I, I want to just ask about the, the advice yeah, of the President. Just a word about yeah, you, you presented Stephanie Roth as, as a journalist. Not, sure. She's not a journalist anymore. Maybe she used to be like 10 years ago, yeah. but she's an activist. She is an activist uh, with the uh, Save Russia Montana campaign for, for almost 10 years now. Right. So she's not a journalist. Then. So you feel she's 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 she comes with a perspective. An environmentalist in, in Great Britain. Uh, so Kathleen, uh, you're actually in this documentary. Um, yes, and, I am. And I, yes. I was actually just looking at, at your website here, which I've got on my laptop. You do yeah. have a very distinct opinion of people who are protesting right now. There's a meme on your front page of your website, and it says, confronted with facts, does not believe <laughs> them, because they have been published by the government. I'm just going to scroll down here because there's a punchline to come. Trust all information given by an anonymous blogger without hesitation. So, Kathleen, how does yeah. <laughs> has that encapsulized your idea of what the protest is about? You, you don't feel that they are informed, perhaps? No, I, I, I think that, was one, that one was posted before the protest started. Right. Yeah. So, so basically it is something that I noticed and it is happening not only in, in Romania but I think it's happening uh, all over the world is like like uh, I mean people do do not want to inform themselves anymore or, or look into into more sources for for finding the real information is, is what like, are like the sources? Uh, giving Mr. and, and I'm, I'm not saying Mr. that because because uh, I'm not saying for the people who are just against the mining project but I'm, I'm saying for, for the people who are let's say supporters of, of the mining project I think uh, all voices should should be heard I think that the protests that that are we're having today in in Romania and well uh, Michna said uh, said before that since Sunday in more than 25 cities in Romania are happening protest is not it's not entirely true uh, because well, Mr. It, is Hosso, happen I it, think it is happening daily in in Bucharest and Cluj but in I all think the other your cities voice has was, been was heard enough Sunday. for about 10 years so I'm, I'm, I'm not just public. Uh, and so basically that, that is what I, what I think. People should go more into facts, more into, into deal, uh, details and try to find out for themselves and, and, uh, uh, and decide for themselves what, is, uh, what they believe in. So, Mishnia, I just but, played a little clip from yeah. that documentary about the residents and concern about the residents being moved out of the area. What do you know about that situation? Well, once again, I want to answer first the people right now in the streets are the people that are not being heard in Romania. For more than 10 years this company had a lot of publicity on every every television in Romania, also on national television. These are the people of which their voices have not been heard and now they are in the streets because nobody wanted to listen to them. No mainstream media wanted to listen to them. This company has publicity contracts with everyone and is paying everyone. Ask them about their investments, how much money went into publicity in this country. And also in Russia Montana there is now an legal grave digging program in which dead people are being removed from their graves and taken elsewhere from to make way for the company to destroy everything so i'm sorry but we must uh, tell uh, this uh, fact and of, also again and also again i'm not here any i'm not here i'm not here no i'm not here to discuss as i told your colleague earlier earlier today i'm not here to discuss uh, and to debate with the company. I know their point of view and it's, you'll just have a deaf people dialogue. I'm here to tell everyone that this law, that the special law for Russia Montana is illegal and anti-constitutional and that's why the people are in the streets. You can't make a law in which a private company can exploit people in the name of the state and All that's right. it. 
Mishnah, you've done that. I'm going to bring in the community because they want to add to the conversation too. They do. And Yonel, I want to bring you in with this one. There's a Facebook comment from Alexandro. She says, do you know that the majority of people who live in the area of the development support it? As usual, the environmentalists are blind and are not willing to accept that there's another side. But speaking of that other side, we got a tweet from a golden people who writes in, ask a starving man if he'll have bread. Will he say yes, but sustainably baked? That's why we have the government to care pro properly for the people. So this person is saying that people are in support of it because they need the jobs. What's the government doing about their issues? Uh, first of all, uh, in order to avoid uh, the misunderstanding, uh, I say I'm not advisor for uh, Russia Montana Gold Corporation. Secondly, the Russia Montana project uh, enjoys a wide scale support from the community. Last year, a local referendum was organized and the mining communities voted for the restart of mining in the Apusen Mountains in a share of 71%. These communities have been uh, living from mining. They know best the how local mining can develop. Please, 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 we are not in Romania. Please, we are not in Romania. Yes? Okay, you thank you very much. Thank you very much. Answer. Thank you very much. Alexandra, uh, hold, moreover, hold tight one, one moment. Moreover, as uh, per the latest Sociopol survey, 68% of the Romanians support the mining project and are confident for the government will approve the law on gold extraction in Russia Montana. We cannot talk about breaks in Romanian society. There are groups opposing this mining project for various reasons. It is their right to have this point of view. I respect them. Important is that the parliament debate is made with solid arguments regarding the economic and social impact of the project. And the parliament should not vote under the pressure of the street. The I people from University Square are the victims of a systematic misinformation campaign instrumented by the opponents of the mining project. The opponent's activity is a sporadic one and focuses only on actions in the square. We have not heard of any wide-scale program of the NGOs for the sustainable development of Russia Montana and the Apusen mountain area. And uh, I finish from this point of view, uh, it is uh, very important that uh, these debates are civilized and focused on the national interest. And the national interest for this project lays in these economic benefits and capacity to relaunch the economy of Romania. Alexandra, go ahead. Yes. Um, first of all, uh, the community we are talking about is 20% of the initial number. I mean, the mining company, without having any permits just yet, they relocated 80% of the people, of the population. So we speak about 20% of the people from which some of them are already employed by the mining company. So of course they support the project, they want a job. Uh, moreover, I want to speak uh, about the fact that um, not only environmentalists and ignorant people, as they are called, are the ones that go out in the streets, are against the mining project. We have Romanian Academy of Science. We have Academy of Economical Science of Romania. We have UNESCO consultant ECOMOS. We have the Association of uh, Scientists Romanians all over the world and thousands of other experts around the world. And I'm going to tell you that the Romanian Academy of Economic Studies in Bucharest says Brosha Montana mine project is unfeasible, unethical, and drags on for too long, blocking other economical initiatives in the area. It is not worth to destroy the area. Okay, Alexandra, I want to just squeeze in one more thing from our community before we run out of time. We generate a high unemployment rate and considerable impoverishment of the population. This is why what the Academy, uh, Academy of Economic Studies in Romania is saying. All right, Alexandra, hold tight one moment. Let's uh, go back to the community. Well, what I'm seeing right now is a lot of people pushing back on Yonel and what you just said. Christian tweets in, the referendum did not have an attendance of at least 50% of the locals. Ask him about the attendance, he says. And, and people are also weighing in about jobs. Mishnia, have a listen to this video comment. There are not other job opportunities in uh, Russia, Montana. And that's because the authority, the local authorities there uh, declared the area a mono-industrial area and uh, that's uh, only 
their fault. The people uh, at the locals chose to represent them, um, declared this area a mono industrial area. So that's it. So, Mishnia, you have about 30 seconds to answer, but he takes it back to jobs, and people need jobs, and that's why they're in support of it. Yes, of course, uh, everyone can understand that every, everyone needs a job, but uh, this being a mono-industrial area, and this being an area in which there exists a local resistance who doesn't want to live, people who want to live their life in Russia, Montana, and don't want to live by mining. Uh, and also, I want to state that this is an open cast gold mine. The people that uh, Remedjece has hired, these are m underground miners. They will not have a job when the, when, when, when the mining will start. So we must, uh, we must state that very clearly. And also, the people who are resisting now in Russia, Montana, refuse to leave, are people who are farmers. I told you before, there are people who can live uh, through cultural tourism and a uh, lot uh, of our opportunities. The state mine closed in 2007 and since, since then I have seen no no reconver professional reconversion program by, by any government. Okay. So government, the government did nothing for these people. All right, Mishnah, that's a great place to put a pause on our conversation. We are by no means over yet. We are going to move all of our guests to the post show at stream.aldazio.com. But right now, here's Malika with some of the other leads that we're following. The internet is filled with selfies, those one-handed self-portraits aimed at showing the world our best side. But one photographer in Ghana is turning the lens the other way. Yaw Benu, a 19-year-old university student, is taking to the streets of Accra to tell the stories of its people one photograph at a time. Afternoon soccer on Red Sand, he posts, everyone playing on this field has a dream, a dream to one day play in the biggest soccer league in the world. His Humans of Accra photo blog was inspired by photographer Brandon Stanton's now viral Humans of New York project. That began on Facebook as a photo census of New Yorkers in 2010 and now boasts more than a million likes. It's also sparked a wave of copycats with Facebook pages dedicated to the Humans of Paris, Humans of Doha, and many more. Our next lead's out of Egypt where a new video attempts to shed light on the treatment of Syrian refugees in the country. Have a listen. The video produced by the Cairo based ANA New Media Association shows Syrian boys describing raids they claim to have witnessed by Egyptian security forces. In an interview with the stream, Rami Jarrah, the co-director of ANA, explained the current situation. Take a look. I could be stopped at a checkpoint now, and I could be arrested and deported, and this would have nothing to do with my documents being legal or being registered at the UN or not being registered. Uh, in fact, a, num a large number of people that were deported uh, were actually legal and did not have anything wrong with their documents. Well, for more on this story, check out stream.aljazeera.com slash stories. Femi? I'm just looking at one of the videos we were doing for our research. We're looking into Russia, Montana. This is a campaign video to save Russia, Montana. Right. It's so striking. I actually want you to take a look at it. It's in black and white, and it just sums up the entire story from the activist point of view. Have a look at this. Who knows you are? Sunt Maya Morgenstern și vreau să fac o donație celor care au neapărat nevoie de aur. Poftiți, domnilor! Tot aurul meu! Well, that's one side of the debate. You will hear the other side of the debate at stream.outofzero.com to be continued. Meanwhile, let me tell you about Monday. Is free trade fair? Many Colombian farmers say that unfair trade policies are ruining their livelihoods. We'll look into labor protests in Colombia. Stay with us. The post show is next at stream.outofzero.com. We'll see you online. Thanks for watching.
Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. We've been talking about the controversy surrounding the Russian Montana gold mining project in Romania. How do you balance concerns for the environment with economic opportunity? Our guests are Catalin Hosso, he's a communications manager of the Russian Montana Gold Corporation. Mishnia Abladayu is a member of the Save Russia Montana campaign. Alexandra Doru is a communications manager of the Russia Montana Cultural Foundation. And Yonel Blancolescu is a Romanian economist mm -hmm. and special advisor to the Prime Minister. Hello again. It's great to have you all back here in the stream. This is a okay. difficult conversation to have because we're balancing what seems to be two completely opposed ideas. Malika, where is the community falling right now? Well, we're trying to find a middle ground. We have this Facebook comment from Adrian, who at the top of the show, told us all that he pitched the idea for the show. He writes in, I don't know if this will be an environmental disaster or an economic opportunity because Romanian politicians do not discuss the problem, the project, he says. So, Catalin, you're not, of course, a Romanian politician, but it is no, the company, thank God. Is, thank God, is the company <laughs> doing enough to explain what's going on to the residents? Yeah, we're trying, and, and uh, I, that's why we're doing a communication campaign. That's why what we're doing. Uh, we we decided. I, I mean, we noticed that it is a need for for information. So we're trying to do whatever we can to do our best to inform anyone who who needs information. We we have a, 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 an everyday open um, uh, info center. We have. Uh, a lot of other means to to inform citizen and maybe maybe now with uh, with uh, this debate moving into parliament will be the most democratic way to 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 talk about the Rosh Montana project i mean we everyone in the world any industrial activity any economic activity today in the world should balance the environmental side with the economic side so because uh, otherwise you cannot do anything of course there is an environmental question. impact for any activity uh, any human activity but you should balance it alexandra um mr hosu is talking about informing trying to inform trying but i don't know how much they get to do it because i have a lot of questions that are not being answered and one of them is what are the risks of the project i'm sorry what are the what risks are of the, the project risks of the project well, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry that you did not know that, but we submitted all the documentation in 2006 and there Please is an entire the chapter of, of risks in, in, in short, our environmental in short, impact assessment. Shortly. So it is a, an entire chapter and it would take us about, uh, I don't know, three or four hours to discuss but the entire chapter. But tell the audience chapter. because a lot of people are watching So uh, they Alexandra, let me, let me summarize this a little bit so that audience can be aware of this. There was a, a cyanide spill, there was a dam spill, like the tailings That's toxic true. ponds where Consider some of the effluent from, from the mining gets dumped basically one of the and there was environmental disasters in Europe so this happened back in 2000 in Romania not too far away from Russia Montana so of course we're Catalin, quite very far away all right but quite very far away, all right, so, kilometers. so we're still staying in the same country we're still talking about yes. mining but I, I take your your point about how many miles we're talking about here so of course residents are going to be very concerned that something like that might happen again how exactly. do you respond and to that? It is, a legitimate, it is a legitimate concern. But if anyone would look at the technical design of the tailings management facility, uh, the technical design of the, of the dam of the tailings management facility, which were uh, made by the most prestigious uh, companies in, uh, in the world and was also reviewed by the Norwegian Geotechnical Institute, we'll see that the conclusions of the Norwegian Geotechnical Institute was that it, the dam it is 100 times safer than any similar construction in the world and the probability for the dam to fail it is 1000 times less than any other similar construction in the world so i what guess what about this the leaking of the cyanide in the phreatic waters geology geologist experts in romania in are saying that the rock is permeable so the cyanide could leak and contaminate yeah, the, the, the whole the, the, phreatic well, water you the said area. that some geologists are saying that right 
So who am I supposed to believe? The Romanian Academy or um, well, or yeah, I, I think from you the should. I think you should believe uh, the geologists that have made uh, a geotechnical uh, that made geotechnical drillings in uh, yes, in, I believe uh, in Robert that Moore. area, and also I you I should, believe you should believe uh, a very so Alexandra, from the Alexandra and Britain. Kathleen. You 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 hear the issue here. There are st some of the protesters and some of the the, the fiercest protesters. They don't believe you. That's that's a, an impasse. That we're going to, well, we're they don't I'm going have to believe me. They don't have to believe me. They, they, it is, it the is politicians have to believe you, though, don't they? Should, should happen here. Right. Okay, let and me... One more question. Of Alexandra. Question. I'm a communication Alexandra. person. Alexandra is a communication person. It is not up to us to decide what's, what's going to happen. I'm an environmental specialist. I have decide. an environment council degree, so... Alexandra, I'm just going to ask you to pause for a moment because we want to get other people into this conversation. Okay. Well, the community is shifting gears just a little bit here, and they're talking about the media. Now, uh, on, the, on the, uh, the idea of who benefits, Christian writes in, the company that gets the minerals, politicians that get the bribes, and the press that is paid to shut up. Uh, Umbra tweets in, none of them, meaning the media companies there, report on protests, and that's why we contacted AJ Stream. She says to make our voices heard. And, and people have been sending us things. I, I'm playing um, a video of a recent protest on my screen here. Um, people out on the street banging drums, uh, protesting against the mine. So Mishnia, I want to talk about the media. Are Romanians being able to hear their voices heard where they live? Well, not because I, as I told you before, this company has bought a lot of publicity in the in the, in the mainstream media, and they have a lot of contracts. And uh, every every day since the protest started, we have a lot of complaints from everyone, and it's, and we even have anonymous complaints from journalists that are not being let to 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 broadcast from the from the squares in Romania, are not being let to to write about this uh, to write about this subject in Romania about the subject of Russia Montana mining, and that's why that's. Why why uh, we are very happy that the international media has uh, has approached the subject, and I, I wanted I just wanted to tell you that for us it is a very important subject, and uh, we just had enough. And I want to tell uh, especially the business community in the uh, United States and Canada that this company will ruin your opportunity of doing any business here. But behavior of this company and the behavior of the Romanian government and Romanian politician will ruin you every investment that you want to make here in the future because people had enough. This is political and social and economic instability and people had enough and people will take to the streets one more time again and again every day until this is over. You know what's important to remember in this conversation is that Romania's circumstances they're not necessarily very good you're the second poorest country in the EU back in 2009 the IMF did a bailout deal with you so you really do need to be able to use your natural resources if at all possible, but what might be the alternatives if the people in this region are worried and concerned about the environment, their health, their heritage, what else could they do? There's an alternative. Yes, I will. From, uh, I from my point you know. of view, economic point of view, uh, I uh, consider uh, we have not the alternative. We have to <laughs> develop uh, the investments uh, project uh, for me, it's a normal uh, debate, civilized debate. Uh, it's an, uh, a really uh, a de democracy in our uh, country. Uh, we uh, follow uh, this kind of uh, debate. This is real democracy, like, Mr. Uh, Blanc, when you buy the press. This is real democracy. Really, yes, really, yes. yes. And you uh, being a former advisor of a Russian Motor Gold Corporation and now being an advisor of a prime minister, uh, that's democracy for you? No, I'm really sorry. I'm really you sorry, are Mr. In, Blanculescu. You your are time has come. Your time is up, Mr. Blanculescu. You, All your politicians, you, you, your time is up, man. I'm sorry. You your are time not is so up, man. The revolution is here, man. The I'm revolution is here. I'm very sorry, man. Please uh, respect the floor. You are not in Romania now. So, Mishnia, I, I hear you, Alexandra, I hear you. Let me just hear from Ian now. One, one moment. I, 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 I want uh, again uh, to say I am not the advisor of Russia Montana. But you were. Uh, yes, I you were. I don't yes, work. I didn't Mishnia, I'm going to ask you, Russia, just to hold tight for please, a moment. Let him finish. Let our guest finish his sentence, and then we will come back to you. Please, please yeah, sure. respect uh, uh, you know, uh, please, the atmosphere. Please go yes. ahead. Go ahead, we're uh, almost at the end of the program. We, uh, in a world uh, wide, we have 500 uh, this kind of exploitation of gold mines. 
each country in each country uh, where the debates especially now in another uh, sector on the shale gas by uh, hydraulic fracking all the people uh, discuss there are the uh, people uh, which uh, who protest is normally and we respect uh, the people from uh, university square we uh, debate we uh, negotiate with all the parts and uh, i hope in the parliament of romania uh, the people from uh, street will present the arguments will argue uh, for to uh, conclude the, a good law and uh, of course i wish to okay. Uh, this law uh, to be a very good law for uh, Romania for to begin this uh, project investment and of course for to respect all 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 the rules in our country okay so I'm gonna leave it there do you remember at the very beginning in the pre-show I asked you a question that really needed only a one-line answer I'm gonna ask you to be that disciplined again as we wrap things up Mishnia these protests have been going on for over a decade what keeps you going they believe that this is our country and this is the land of a people and the people have a right to live on their land and people have a right to a clean environment, to a cultural heritage and the right of property. And this special law made by this government is breaking all, all of this and we will fight until the end. And people will not leave from Russia Montana. It's very important to know for every, every to all, all the international community, people will not leave from Russia Montana. Okay, Alexandra, what keeps you going? Uh, it keeps me going the idea that you can not sell what Russia Montana has. Russia Montana is a sacred land for Romanians everywhere. You can't sell that. It doesn't have a price. And there is an alternative, a World Heritage Site. You can't say that the only alternative is mining, open cast mining. Okay. This is a solution. There are two mines in Europe, two villages in Europe that went from mining to tourism and are extremely successful. All right. One is in Slovenia and Alexandra, one is in Great Britain. your idea of a sentence is a little different from my idea of a sentence, but we were landing there. I love that. Thank you very much. Kathleen, you moved to Russia, Montana about a decade ago to start yes. work. Man, this project hasn't even started yet. Yes. What keeps you going in a sentence? This project, it will be the best mining project that was ever done in in Europe or in the world. It is the chance of a mining community to keep its mining tradition for 2000 years. Thank you so much to all of our guests. We really appreciate you shining a light on this conversation that's happening in Romania and just beginning to be heard by the rest of the world. Malika? We're seeing still, as, mm -hmm. we, as we did at the beginning of the show, both sides. Uh, Z2 says the people live for mining from gen for generations. The area is one of the poorest in Romania. Extracting the gold gives them a future. But on the other side, Umbra says all we can say is we won't stop protesting until the company leaves Romania. No to mining. And right now, Romania, this, uh, this approval by the government is going to go to a vote. We will keep you up to date with it, of course, at stream.outazero.com. Let me quickly tell you about Monday's program. We'll be looking at Colombia's farmers and their fair trade strikes and why they're on strike. And are, is fair trade actually affecting their livelihoods? We'll be looking into that in more detail on Monday. But right now, we'll always be online at stream.outazero.com. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.